All right, so for this question, what we're asked to do is identify all the zero force members in the truss. We're going to do this just using the visual method, where we have the two different rules that we can apply for identifying zero force members. So just a reminder, the first rule is that we're looking for instances where we have two members coming together at a joint and there's no forces externally applied to that joint. They got Both of those members will be zero force. The second rule is we need to look for instances where we have three members coming together at a joint. If two of them are collinear, in other words, form a straight line, the third member will be a zero force one, um, so long as, again, there's no externally for applied forces at that joint. All right, so we're going to start this off by just drawing the free body diagram and identifying all the different um, joints which have externally applied forces. So we've got the six kilonewton ones on both of these um, nodes or joints. So neither of these are going to really be able to have that um, either of the zero force member rules applied. And we're also going to have um, some forces applied at the supports. So at E here, we've got a roller joint which means that we're going to have a um, vertical reaction force there. And at A we have a pin joint, which means we're going to have a horizontal and a vertical component reacting. All right, so now we have to go through and figure out which nodes um, are the ones where we can apply these, um, these zero force rules. And let me just quickly jot on all the different names that we have for our um, nodes. So it makes a little bit more sense when I start referring to them. All right, so the first rule that I mentioned was we need to look for instances where we have two members coming together and no externally applied forces because both of the members that come together are going to be zero force. So looking at this diagram that we have, um, we can see that node B here is going to be an example of that. We have two members coming together. We have no externally applied forces. None of these red forces are applied there. So that means that both of these are going to be zero force members. Okay, so let's make a list. So we're going to have um, BC, this one here, and AB as well. All right, we have another instance where the same rule can be applied, and that's at node D. Ooh, let's make that a little bit nicer. So again, we have two coming together, no forces externally applied, so both of these are going to be zero force. So we've got CD and also DE. All right, so I don't think we have any more instances where we have just two members coming together, um, so we're not able to apply that rule anymore. So the next rule that we have is when we have three members coming together and two of them are in a line, um, the third one becomes a zero force. And again, that's provided we have no externally applied forces. So I think an instance where that one is applicable is at node H down the bottom here. You can see we have two members which are in a straight line and this third one is subsequently going to be zero force. Um, simply because, again, there's no externally applied forces there. So this is a zero force member. So that is HI. All right, so I'm not sure that there's any others that we can kind of directly look at using this method. However, what's going to happen is this one's zero force. So if we just get rid of it for a second because it's not carrying any force and re-examine our problem, we can see that we've opened up an extra... Um, member of um, extra joint I guess where we've got three coming together and again two of them are in a straight line and this third one is subsequently going to be a zero force member okay um, so we can add that one to the list as well so GI is also going to be zero force Alright, so I know this thing is symmetric, so I guess you probably could think about doing it on this one, applying these rules, but you can see that we have this 6 kilonewtons being applied here. So that's going to mean that we have, um, we're not able to apply the rule because these rules are only applicable when you have no externally applied forces on the joint. So I think that concludes um, the list of all the different members, which is zero force. I'll just pop this one back in. That was a zero force member.
Um, so I guess the only kind of trick is, is once you identify a member as being zero force, um, double check that if you took it out, um, that you wouldn't create any more um, zero force members that you could identify um, as a result. So these here are all our answers for the zero force members. And the following um, question um, is going to look at actually calculating some forces in the truss.